If you have any sort of knob or dial that turns on your MIDI controller, I am going to show you how you can use those knobs to control any effect in any of the machines in Caustic 3. And it's so much better than having to, I use the standalone Windows version, so I have to use my mouse and click on it and move it if I'm doing any sort of automation. And it's just, it just makes it so sketchy to do it that way. I always have to use, uh, from there, you always have to just go in and, and dial in the automation uh, from that. And when you're using a mouse, everything's just tough. Um, so this way, it's so smooth just using the dials and it's, you just get so much better results. So it starts now. So here we are in Caustic 3. Now, I made, for the sake of this tutorial, I went ahead and made a simple drum pattern and a simple uh, bass line. Now, funny thing with this bass line, I was just messing around earlier and I just randomly put these notes in. And this is what it sounds like. Isn't that funny? It turned out funky. I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, it's funny. And this was just so random. But anyways, um, let's get to um, dialing in these knobs. So as on each machine, you know that there's different um, different effects and different knobs that you can turn. Um, and so what you can do is if you have uh, any sort of controller that has these knobs that turn, you can, uh, you can dial all of those in just by uh by turning the knob now i have uh this which is so much easier to turn a knob because i have the windows version it's a standalone version uh and if i'm doing something i have to use my mouse and then turn it and then some see that you see how it just messed up when i was trying to go up um, it, it kind of screws, it's hard to kind of make it go from one thing, you go there, and if you do the wrong thing, then it goes there, and it, it starts moving where you don't want it to, and that's happened so many times for me, and I always have to use, go back, and then use the automation, and stuff like that, which is not that bad, because you can really dial in doing it that way, but it's so much easier to use a knob. Now, I'm going to show you how to, um, how to map these knobs, to your controller. So if you have any sort of knob on this, this is how you can control it. And I'm just going to mess around with these knobs right now. So we're going to go to MIDI. And then, so right here it says, I have the MPK Mini. And it says that uh, it's registered right here. So if you plug yours in, I have to plug my, mi my, my MIDI in, make sure it's, or <laughs> my MIDI, my, uh, my controller in before I start caustic or it doesn't recognize it for some reason, but yours might be different. So if that's happening, try to plug it in before you start caustic and then it will show up right here. Now it should recognize most third, no, most first party controllers, but if you have some obscure third party one, it might not, but um, it, it, uh, it found mine. So we're just going to move on from here. So we're gonna go to CC mappings and we are going to choose right here. You see all the machines. But since uh, we we're I'm going to show the baseline first, so let's just choose baseline. Now, um, if you want to, uh, if it's already mapped to something, to clear it, all you have to do is select it and hit clear. Just select clear. It's all you got to do to make sure that uh, it's not mapped to anything as of right now. But for for uh, right now, I want the volume control on the on the baseline machine to be my first knob so i'm going to choose volume hit learn and go to your first knob or whatever knob that you want it which is i'm using the first so all you have to do is just turn it see it just showed up it's number 70 so right now this first knob is going to control the volume um and you just can go from there. So on the top of the machine, it goes, the dials go waveform, pulse width, tune, uh, cut off, you know, and, and so on. Um, so I just want control over maybe the first three. So I'm going to do, I'm going to hit uh, pulse width and I'm going to hit learn. Now I want that for my second knob. So I'm just going to turn the second knob, C71. Now I want the tune to be my third knob. 
So if you click that in it, learn, it should pop up 72. There you go, 72. And last, I want the fourth knob to be the cutoff. So I am going to uh, click cutoff and hit learn and just move the fourth knob and it shows up right there. So now we can go back and go to right here. Now watch what happens when I play. Here's the volume control. Now the second one is the full switch. Now the third is the chain. And then this one is the cutoff. So you can really dial it in from here. Like, okay, cool, yeah, this sounds good. Or maybe like a little bit more down. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. So anyways, that is how, and you can map whatever you want, any of these things to the knobs right there. And I'm going to do it for one more machine. So let's go to, uh, this is my simple pattern right here for my beatbox. Um, so, uh, I'm going to mess with the dials for the first, uh, for the first channel, which is my kick. Um, so let's go back to these, go back to MIDI. Now hit CC mappings again and see we're on baseline right now. We're going to go down to beatbox and these right now, these are mapped to my pads right here. This is the, uh, the pad the uh it says play channel one and that's you know how i just hit the kick thing and it's like see this is my first channel and then it hit the the kick drum this will just is the play thing like that how i just pushed play and it did the kick drum that's the play thing um but i have these mapped out to my pads and i have another tutorial on that so if you want to learn how to map the pads just um watch that tutorial but anyways um if we go down you can see that the volume, this is actually for the main volume, not for the first channel volume. And right now, I just want access to the first channel, um, which is my kicks. And I want the first knob to be my volume knob. So you click this, hit learn, and once again, just turn the first knob. Oh, it, it, I guess it already is. I already mapped all these earlier. So uh, let's just... Um, Oh, yeah, you can enter what, what number if you want. So I know that my, vo my first knob is a 70. You can add whatever, if you already know the number. So let's go back and say like, oh, I want this to be uh, to be my first knob, and I know it's 70. Just hit 70, done, and now it's mapped to 70. But right now, uh, remember again, you could just hit, hit clear. Um, so we're going to just uh, map map this again. So volume is going to be hit learn, hit the first knob, just turn it, 70, and then from there on, you just turn your knobs. Um, and then, so let's go back to here. Uh, go back to my drums. Now, if I solo this and just hit this, it's nothing but there, but watch. Now I can turn my things and it'll, uh, and it'll have control with it. Here, let's just say I don't want the drums to go down. I can just turn these down. Now I don't have any drums. And here's the tune. The second one was to the tune. And the other one was to the punch. Now, if you don't know, the punch is... Let's switch to actually um, this. The punch is just like the attack button. And that is its uh, the amount of time it goes from silent to the full velocity um, of the sound. And if you turn this down... There'll be silence before you actually hear the velocity of the sound. Um, now with this, the decay is the exact opposite. It is um, the tail end of it. Now watch, if you turn all the way, it'll play the full thing, the full tail end of it. But you could turn that down. You could cut the tail end off by using the decay. And that's the same as the release button on something else. Decay... Um, and release is pretty much the same thing. See how it cuts it off. But anyways, this isn't a, a, a tutorial in this. I'm just showing you how to map these. But anyways, now I have control over this. So um, let's just uh, go back uh, to right here and say I want full control over the tune and the cutoff, because I say like, oh, I like how it sounds when they're when they're both moving together. Now you can actually map one of your dials 
to be the same button as this. So if you move one dial, both of these will do that, and I'll show you how. So let's go back to um, uh, to right here. Let's go to, uh, yeah, I'm already here, MIDI, and then go to CC Mappings. Now we're on Beatbox. We're going to choose Baseline. And I wanted the, um, what did I want? I wanted something. I wanted the pulse width, not the pulse width, the tune and the cutoff to be the same thing. And say I want that for my um, uh, for my first knob, but I already know that my first knob is the volume. So once again, just hit clear, and then I want these two affected. So now when I hit the first thing, this won't be in there. If I go back and this thing's on none, now that knob isn't going to do it isn't going to control it but i want control over uh the tune and the cutoff at the same time so let's clear these and then now i want it to be the first knob so hit tune uh learn and then just move the first knob which is 70. now the cutoff um learn turn the knob again see how they're both at 70 now so let's go back um now here we are with this let's not solo this anymore let's play both of these now watch what happens when you play it. Here's the, uh, the first knob. I'm going to turn it now. Now see how it, it, they both move now at the same time just by moving the uh, first knob. Anyways, that's stupid. Uh, <laughs> so, um, that's the end of the tutorial. That's how you can, in, you know, there is just so many different uh, things that you could choose from. And all of these have, have um, different dials and knobs on it. And you can assign these knobs to pretty much any of these effects that you want. Um, and I thought that was just something really cool that I wanted to share with you guys. So anyways, that's the end of the tutorial. And I'll see you next time. Would you like to marry me and have 10,000 of my babies? Comment A for yes, B for no and C for maybe. Giggle giggle.